See, look, another one. Everyone's making the same joke about the Santa Fe. It's a box. Low-hanging fruit. Only morons in society are choosing that. Hey, James. Why'd you park the Santa Fe here? <laughs> You're watching Throttle House. I'm Thomas. And I'm James. And this is the brand new 2024 Hyundai Santa Fe. The Santa Fe, a car that at the turn of the millennium changed the world with its introduction. The words from journalists at the time said it all. If only we could overlook its exuberantly uh, different sheet metal, we might be able to see that it had unproven reliability, unimpressive four-wheeling capability, underwhelming powertrain performance. Nothing before had been so incredibly, shockingly, game-changingly mid. But times have changed. Hyundai and Kia are killing it now, if you haven't heard. And the new Santa Fe is different. Very different. Look at it. We're looking at it. We have ever since it got revealed. So now that it's here, what's it actually like? Thanks to the kind people at Alexander Hyundai of Oxnard, we have one today. It starts at just over 35 grand in the US and 40 grand in Canada, which for a three row fancy inspired SUV isn't that bad. But let's see if it's more than just a new face, shall we? If you're new to Throttle House, we do car reviews, track tests, and quite a lot of messing around. <laughs> so subscribe and enjoy the show. Can I be honest with you? Yeah. I've never really been that excited about the Hyundai Santa Fe. No, that's fair enough. I, yeah. I don't think it, it's meant to be an exciting car. I did recommend one for my parents to purchase. And I was going to say, and they bought one. your mum yeah. has one. She does. Yeah, it doesn't look like this because this looks like a Land Rover Defender. It does. Yeah, it does. And we, you might hear that a couple of times today. And, yeah, and it's, it's Hyundai's fault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But they've gone boxy. They've done the boxy thing, and, and it's as a result, it's very spacious and easy to see out of in here. Yeah, great, right? great visibility. Great visibility, and just the right amount of cabin insulation so that we can hear. The, the lovely high quality thrum of a 2.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder. It's fine. It's fine. You know what? That's the word. That's what I was looking for. It's a bit coarse, but it's quiet. When you're idling, it's quiet. You, yes. you know, you can barely tell it's on. Yep. And it's, it's, it's nicely insulated. It is, but there's, it's really turbocharged. Like sure. this, like it, now the boost comes on. It's right? fine. It's it is fine. It's quick enough. It's quick enough. I agree. And there's yes. going to be a 1.6 liter hybrid. That'll probably be a little bit more refined feeling, is my guess. Maybe, yeah, maybe. But this this uh, benefits from the eight-speed DCT. I haven't felt a single shift. No, it's yeah. very, it's very nice. Yeah, 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 it's good. The ride is brilliant. I think that's the highlight. I think yeah, I, like right yeah. away. Yeah, it's just it's so calm and lovely. Smooth. It's so smooth. It's actually smooth. smoother than the Defender, I think. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> right? well, the Defender's lugging around a bunch of real stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you know, actual. All right, we're entering the canyons here. Yes. So I'm going to put in sport mode, which does absolutely nothing to the suspension, so it doesn't okay. matter. Okay. <laughs> but it means that as I go down here, yeah, it's it's an SUV. It, the, the but goal, drive it boxy. Drive it boxy. You don't yeah. get you don't get in a in a big tall boxy off roader and cr crush canyons in it. True. It doesn't belong here. The center right? of gravity is is, is is up there with the uh, Burj Khalifa. <laughs> <And> it, <laughs> yeah, that's true. But it 
It just, oh yeah, it, this is not where it, it, it lives. No, but that's okay, you can still do this. But on the normal roads and on the highway driving here, it, it's just quite lovely. I am, I am, I'm not feeling ill though, doing these roads. Like the body is well controlled and the insulation is excellent from the road. Like it's, it's quiet. Yeah, it's, it's very nice. Yeah, you can, you can basically whisper. Wow. I think, no, I think they've done a fantastic job making a people hauler. Yes. Uh, I, think, I think Hyundai and Kia, Kia are doing that a lot at the moment. We just jumped out of the EV9. Yeah. And obviously that's a more expensive EV. But it's just like, it just sort of shows where their head's at and what their mission is at the moment. And this is... Downside, this particular one is not optioned with all-wheel drive. No, but it's not expensive. It's like, it's less than $2,000. It's, it's, it's quite cheap. To add all-wheel drive. But to add all-wheel drive. This is yes. not a less than $2,000 car. Yes, I, I hope they understood that. People go, <laughs> sign the check right away. Um, no, but I, I think what's going to happen, and I'm, I'm poking fun at it, but I think what's going to happen is people are going to you know, lift these a little bit, put some fun wheels on them. I don't think so. I bet you they're, I bet you I it's going it, to happen. No. I bet you, do you remember, what was the, what was the car that had like a weird cult following? Was it the, the Scion TC or CB? The toaster? The, the, the XB. XB. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People modded those. And but that was a such thing. a toaster. It was really toaster. I don't know if yeah. this is that, but we'll see. <laughs> I don't know, I think it's cool looking, I think it's fun. Yeah. It isn't actually an alternative to a Land Rover, right? It just, it won't have the same capabilities, obviously. Right. We're not testing this off-road, but it is very much just a unibody crossover yeah. that's been boxified. The steering is light, it's everything about it is easy. Yes. In throttle input, brake input, yeah. managing, I, like I haven't touched the pedals once because the DCT knows exactly where I want to be. Yeah. So from the driver's seat, yeah. Yeah. Good, it's good little SUV. It's very good. I think it's more of an impact is what they've done to the styling. Yeah. Well, what do you think about the way it looks? <laughs> That's a big question. Um, it looks like a Rivian R1S had sex with a Land Rover Defender. And then the Bronco Sport. And then the Bronco was in Sport. there as well, kind yeah, of like yeah. watching from the corner awkwardly. No, no, that's you know right. I mean? This is a Defender Sport. A Defender Sport is exactly what it is. You know, all, what they've been talking about is they went to all these great lengths to, to, to make it more spacious on the inside. They're really excited about their, their straight back roof here. And they've got this vertical tailgate that pops up, so there's all this room. And then they went, oh, oh what? What? <laughs> it looks like a Defender. How, do, oh, how did that happen? Oh, well, I guess <laughs> we're going to have to. <laughs> Those silly Brits. <laughs> yes. So they've increased the wheelbase. They've Look reduced the front overhang. That, that's 100% from the what? Defender. Where, where's the ladder that goes on it? Or the I, box think you can get, I think you can get some attachments so of course that actually you can. copy it. Yeah. <laughs> so we so have the SEL. There's, this is Phantom Black. So it doesn't okay. actually show off those lines as much as you'd no. expect, like the other colors do. Yeah. If you've got the limited of this, there's a brass mat, which really looks quite funky. I bet that looks good. Look, I, I, so there's this weird thing at the moment yeah. where cars in photos can either look better than real life. Yeah. Not at the moment, it's always been a thing, but recently it's been like yeah. people are picking up on this idea that press photos don't quite look. Right. I think this is uglier in real life. I actually agree with you. I don't yeah. mind the way it looks, but when I first saw it, I was like, whoa, yeah. that's cool. I was excited, like boxy is, is a thing right you now. The, Everyone's yeah. doing it. Exactly, right? you got the rear three quarter with the brass mat, that's the images, and then yeah, you yeah. see it and it's like, oh, you know. It's okay. The front's fun, they've got it's, the H yeah. and the lights. Yeah. It doesn't change that, the, the actual, like, you know how we had the EV9 recently? Yeah. And if you've got the GT line, you've got yeah. funky lights. Yeah. From what I've seen on the site, it doesn't matter which trim you get it still kind of looks like this on the front. But I mean, like, w without without even any form of exaggeration, they have literally tried to make this look like a Land Rover product. To right? their credit, it looks completely different on the inside. Do you mean exactly the same? This is a Land Rover steering wheel. Yes, it is. Like, <laughs> absolutely, they did not give a single Frick. No. And they just said, let's just make this look like a Land Rover steering wheel. Well, it's cheeky because they can they can claim to get away with it because I think the four dots is H in Morse code, right? 
So that's like, no, that's actually all emblem. <laughs> but the whole ring around it and the well, it's, this it's shape. It's this shape and yeah. these bits. Like the, it's, it's a really nice steering wheel, but it's a Land Rover steering wheel. It is, it is actually very nice in here. Oh, it's extremely nice in here. I really like the white leathers. I really like the way that it's put together. I like the design. Considering this is not the Limited or the calligraphy, this is just yeah. the SEL. So that's one fancier than the SE. It's very simple. It all makes sense. The little gear selector down here is easy to use. It's got, I like the gauge cluster too. It's yeah. pretty cool. Why did my window? I accidentally hit your window button there. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you can choose black or white for the interior on this. Yeah. And then there's like a brown if you go fancier. But oh, I, I, I see. like the white. It feels really nah, nice. Yeah. We got, we got this. A little bit of storage. We just like the this. Defender. There you go. Just, just like the, the Defender. <laughs> <laughs> bunch of space down here. We have what is a weirdly innovative charging thing. It, it's not, not in the way that the Cayenne has the cooling wireless chargers. But this one... Innovative? I'd... Innovative, yeah, innovative. Innovative. I didn't know we said that word differently. There, there we go. There we go. Yeah. We, the iPhone is dumb. <laughs> yeah. And it has the, the cameras pointing out. So every time we put this on a charge pad, it just leans up on it. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't like quite that. work, yeah. But these... A little raised a little bit. Raised. So it just sits there. So you just pop it over. And there's one for the, the passenger as well. No, this is only oh. if you do the higher trims. Oh, I see. This is, right now, this is just a nice gel sunbathing pad. <laughs> Why is yeah, this you just You cannot there? currently warm your phone with this size. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> we have a cubby. Yeah, yeah, there's lots of space there. Yeah, and I think and it opens. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it goes both ways. Yeah, it's bisectional. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yes, it is bisectional. Very good. This is a 2024 car after all. It is, um, yeah. We, so we're missing some things because it's the SEL. Yes. We haven't got the dual sunroof. But you know what? I don't mind that because for me, what this feels like it's doing is it's capitalizing on how much headroom there is all the way back. There's it's a, a straight roof all the way back and there's a huge amount of headroom. Harrison, Yo. our sound engineer, who's six foot five. Six. Six foot six. He got annoyed at me. I said six foot five once. He's like, why am I getting shorter? I was, <laughs> I was like, that is still 99th percentile. <laughs> You'll be fine. You completed Tinder. Anyway, he, he can sit uh, right behind us easily, perfectly, simply. And yes. you're, you can very easily sit right behind him. Third row, plenty of headroom right. and just about enough leg room for me. So yeah. that's, you know, for- it's Very for, good. It's not a, a go, like a Palisade is gonna offer a more third row experience yeah. if you're doing it on the regular, but just for in a bind, yeah. this, this is better than just in a bind. Gauge cluster. That's cool, I like the, it. The two thing, everyone's doing this, yeah, Mustang, yeah. BMW. That's fine. Yeah, it's responsive. Yep. It works well. Seats are comfortable. Seats are comfortable. The sound system's a bit meh. This is the bass. Yeah. It gets fancy. I think you yeah. get bows. It's right? okay. It's okay. It's just okay. The base. It's yeah, okay. Yeah. Listen, I, I think this is a cool, cool vehicle. Yeah. I think it is exactly, it's a Defender Sport. It's exactly what it is. You, you guys have to know that there, there's a big difference between what this looks like and what it can do compared to the cars it's trying to look like. That was a weird way of saying, it's not gonna be nearly as capable as a Defender or a Bronco or no. whatever it is. That right? said though, uh, if, I've, if, I, if, if I've learned anything from the last few years, things like the Ford Bronco Sport, the soft rotors, yeah. they are weirdly capable. Like, yeah, they, no, they, they absolutely they are. Can, unless you're going rock crawling, yeah. they can pretty much. They can do, mo they, they can do a little bit of off-roading, yeah. they can get you there. Actually, there's a, more, there's a rugged one now. There's a for, for the, there's an XRT trim. Ooh. So that's the off-road one. This isn't right. trying. This is just trying to be. That one just has a Land Rover badge right on it. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. Just yeah. There. It's, it's, it's the Land Rover Wilderness. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Wild track. Wild track. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this this is the sort of more luxury. This is a the base with some nice things, and it, it it does feel quite nice in here. And and not just by feel. I think I think there's there's fun design stuff going. On. I know they've squared everything. Everything's yeah, a box. Squared right off. Yeah. But it but it it looks good. It the was... result is it's it's a nice cabin. Like, no, it is good. This is a sub forty thousand dollar car as expect. That is very impressive. Like when right. you when you re remember that, uh, no, that you're getting a lot. Yeah. A lot of car so for So no, the engine is not massively impressive. No. And the premium for all-wheel drive isn't much, but... Yes, you are going to get made fun of for people that own Defenders. But <laughs> if you can get over that or you don't care, this yeah, is Yeah, but great, you, you rule over the Bronco Sports. You're just Do slightly you? bigger. Are you a little bit? You're a little bit bigger. Maybe. And you're more refined. Okay. And it's softer and nicer okay. insulation. Right, like a Land Rover over a Bronco. So actually, this is a Range Rover. Sure. Okay. It's a Range Rover Bronco Sport Wild Track Wilderness. We solved it. For You're welcome. For 38 grand. Yeah. So there we have it. 
the Range Rover Sport Wild Track Wilderness 130, aka the new Hyundai Santa Fe. Not the most nimble of its class, nor is it the best looking or the quickest. But at the crossroads of faux luxury and faux rugged, the Hyundai Santa Fe finds its home. And that's okay, because at the price point, it does both pretty well. Our first impressions are that even though it's cosplaying as a Land Rover product, it is quite lovely. And hopefully, it's not taken the Land Rover assignment too literally, because wouldn't it be nice if it stood the test of time and, you know, worked for a while. As new owners of an already broken Land Rover, we think so. Thanks for watching.